Hey everybody, this is John. Today we're going to be going over how to make a Android video game. So, and this series is going to be very similar to my Construct 2 series, where we develop a couple of demos and then we actually create a full-on game. So, like in those series, we're going to be doing uh, like uh, some example projects, some tutorials, just to get us into the engine. And then we're actually going to be using those th that knowledge to actually develop something that we can actually put on the Amazon. Uh, store or the uh, Google Play Store. Since now I have an account on both, I'll be acquiring a um, iPhone store account um, relatively soon. Uh, we'll be able to actually port games and I'll be able to go through the process. So in this video we're going to be introducing the engine. This engine went through a couple updates which made it very very viable to make uh, video games for mobile devices, uh, I would suggest that you have a Android uh, 5.0 at least. Some of the 4.0 series don't work that well due to how they run internally unless you have more than one gig of RAM. But that works differently on different phones. I've been testing out some of the low-end phones to see you know how low we can go before we have any issues on poly count inside the scenes and you know visual effects and normal mapping and such before you know we have to say okay we can't run on these type of phones because of this or we can't run on this version of Android. We so far I've been up I've been down to 4.4 .4 Android and I've been uh, you'll have to run smaller scenes however those same scenes can run very well actually beyond very well um, on Android 5.1 on basically the same specs other than it having um, you know like a phone with Adreno 305 which is a type of graphics card and then the Adreno 306 and then just having 10% more CPU power and then basically a, a dual core versus a quad core. If you have a quad core uh, you know phone with 1 gig RAM even on Android 4.4 about you're going to be running fine. Um, anything with the dual core, you may have issues. But uh, let's get started. So this is Copper Cube 5. It is one of the best 3D engines out there in case uh, you didn't want to code at all. In case you did want to code, this engine does allow you to do it. However, we'll be going through mostly the way of non-coding. Later on, in, uh, starting next year, we'll be actually going into Unity with Playmaker, which is a, a visual scripting system in creating PC and uh, Android and other development type games. But right now we're going to be messing around with this engine. Right now we have a cube. But let's go over the UI real quick. So we have File, Edit, View, Scene, Tools, and Help. They're the basic, you know, publish to these formats, publishing settings, which allow you to tweak what uh, or how your um, how your engine works on those platforms. You're gonna need to have a application name. So we you know you edit that when you have to. You have an icon file. Uh, we'll actually be doing this on our first Android demo is by adding an icon so when you see it on your screen you have an icon. Uh, when things update is basically um, how things change on the screen. I do things uh, when a when a scene is changed. You know, you can do every frame, but usually, of course, a little bit more CPU. At version, at version code, height, character animation. You could always add that. Normally, you don't always need to put that, but you can. This is just to say, hey, I do want great animation. Now, the SDK. Now, you you are gonna have to download an SDK, and an SDK is basically uh, how you make an APK file. It's just all those little packets that say, hey, you're going to need this and this and this and this. You're not, you, you know, it basically checks the system, adds in the game files, and, you know, saves it in a little, like, a zip file and, sh and shoots it out to wherever you want to save it to. I'll put the links down below for the stuff that you need to download in order to run it. And then you basically. Take a word like the um, Android SDK, SDK path. Now, this can be a bugger even on Unity. 
um, it can be a bugger. It's basically, you know, you need to find the Android SDK dash Windows and to say, hey, uh, yeah, I, I basically find it using uh, my file and then I say, hey, I'm going to just paste it in folder and then I'm good to go. Then I never ever move it because then it's a pain to find again. Same thing with the Java SDK. So I'll put the links down below. Usually I like putting them on my desktop um, so that they never move, they never have an issue, and I'm like, it's basically staying there. And then I look for Android SDK Windows within that file. I send it through here. It knows where the directories are. It knows, you know, hey, if I'm going to write an SDK, I mix the game files with these needed files. So we have an APK. A key store is basically saying, hey, this is a legit file. Editor, uh, this is what DirectX you're using, OpenGL software. This is going to update soon, from what I hear, to allow 10, 11, and 12. Render size, this is for the scene. I just do automatic. I don't want huge, gigantic scenes, but you know, some people do. We now have language, um, so I just do English, but you also do Espanol, Francis. Russian, Turkey, um, Dutch, Portuguese, and Arabic. We have you use your own local webs, uh, you know, your web server. Basically, that means you use your own web engine. Uh, part of local web server. Okay, uh, Light Mapper uh, for radiosity sample. Never really mess with this. Hardware has celebrated. A, um, global illumination, we have a review grid system, so you can't always mess with this. I never really do. Prefabs, you can always add to these just like in Unity. And directories again. And then this is where we are able to edit uh, stuff about edit, uh, you know, exporting to that format. We'll be even though we'll be exporting to an APK, we'd like to actually visualize the scene bef and you know live before we actually export it to make sure that everything runs pretty well. So I'm going to uh, can't wait. before I enlarge our demo scene area, so that when I say okay, I need to run this test this file, it will put up in a scene big enough for you guys to see. We're going to say not full screen but anti-aliasing. We're going to enable physics in case we want in physics. I have no idea as of yet. I don't think so that it runs on Android though. So for example in case I say um, so I use publish as Windows EXE just to demo it just to see if it runs and then for me to actually just move around and see what I'm doing in the scene. Over here, you're going to have everything in the scene. So, if I were to insert a plane, it would be added to the area. The attributes this is the properties for the actual item. So, in case I wanted to change it to be a metal plate, for it to have transparency, but it has no transparent, uh, you know, like areas in it or cutouts. So, I, have, I can add transparency to it. And then I want to be a uh, solid f uh, fake reflectiveness, so I can make it look either like glass or some form of you know metal. Uh, normal mapped to do this. You need to actually add. Here we go. These. So let's put that off into the second screen. Right, so these are the default items inside of the copper cube textures. So we're just going to select everything and say open. And what we're going to do is we're going to add these textures to the normal map. And then to do normal map, you actually need to add a light. This is going a little bit beyond what we're going to do, but that's you know, to use normal normal maps you need a light so we're actually just going to delete that these are your default prefabs you can always just double click on them
and these are the textures that you can always add just put add and there you go and then you can always just click on them bright fire so uh, for bright fire I can add a um, particle effect click on fire add transparent add transparency but what I can also do is actually go into an image editor since it's a JPEG it say the transparency as black and I can remove the uh, black outline and make it an alpha channel that means transparent see-through and so then I could just use the uh, transparent alpha channel see in transparent alpha channel it searches for uh, basically so where no color has been added to an object and we'll get to that when we use paint.net um, when you have when you put a dot in the center of the screen and there's no white uh, boundary there's no black boundary it says transparent usually that is displayed by a gray and white checkerboard and then when you save it as a PNG it you know carries it so when it says okay transparent with alpha channel for example uh, this tree There we go. So if I were to add a plane, okay, and I add this tree, this tree has color, but also has this alpha channel. If I can increase, here, let's, we can also enlarge this area. There we go. So like in like this area, between these teeth, no color, no nothing. Same thing with this tree. If I were to add it. And then see it's a solid alpha channel. There we go. Alright. So now that we're kind of done and we kind of know what's going on here, the last thing would be to basically go over what these things are. Add a cube, sphere, cylinder, cone, plane. You can build a room, a terrain, import a static mesh, import an animated mesh create a point light now later on I would like for this to have cone light or you know um, an area light you know different type of lighting effects create a directional light which is really nice add a camera so we can add a simple camera first person camera third person camera uh, free flying camera model viewer and panorama camera excuse me not a yawn there. Uh, you can create a tree, create a water surface, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, billboard, vertical billboard, particle, skybox. So right now you can actually just delete your skybox um, and add in a different one. But I actually just prefer to go to uh, scene. Oh, here we go. Startup box. Um, let's see. Okay, so you go to your startup skybox, and you actually can change these by just, you know, selecting on the item, selecting it, and there you go. And then you can add transparent alpha. But there's nothing actually behind that box. This is literally we're inside a box, um, like a little like um like seriously talking about like we're inside a box like this this is made huge so there's nothing outside of this area but we can make the box as big as we want by saying hey we want a big freaking level all right so we can add a sound a 3d sound by saying okay if we get too far away from this we can't hear it but if we go nearer to it we can hear it this is made popular in many video games. Um, create a path so we can have a character walk a certain path. I would like there to be a, a actual like Unity or Blender 3D animation to where you can actually animate a character using an um, you know, like an animated scene editor. So this would be good to like create a path like a character walks a path. But I would like there to be a you know path AI system to where it's going to randomly walk between certain item uh, you know items or invisible um, you know walk path icons. This is a 2D overlay. These are what you touch when you either want to uh, 
you know, do an Android game or iOS game and you have to, hit, you know, touch that icon. Or you could use them as UI in a video game. You know, health icon, a reload icon, all that type of stuff. And your joystick so you can move your character. And you have this drop down uh, for any items in case you are on a tiny little screen. So that's basically everything. Uh, right now we are going to just go straight into making a little tiny scene um, using a third person because that's a little bit easier for the first timers you know, to go around to. You can make a first person right off the bat, however touch sensitivity sometimes gets annoying but can be done. Um, so yeah, this is the first um, episode of how to make a video game. Specifically, we're going to be going into Android, but this is an intro video for all of the Copper Cube videos. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode.